Hello again, everyone. Keta Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, coming to you once again from Vancouver, British Columbia, here in Canada, uh, right there in the middle of June. I know I haven't made an update here on YouTube for a while. Um, it's just been really busy and, you know, I'm running my business and we're doing our uh, weekly and monthly deadlines. And so sometimes these free uh, update things I don't have a chance to do. However, we do put every week the price update on my website, uh, madisonsreport.com. The link is here in the caption. So you might not have the uh, fun of watching me describe everything on YouTube, but you can get the price update, the little snapshot that I do uh, on the website um, following, you know, in a lag after when my paying customers get it, uh, the ones that have the login to my dashboard where they get the weekly lumber price update every Friday. And so quite a few things have happened in the past four weeks since I made uh, my last update. Um, and prices are down. Yes, that is true. It is uh, normal, seasonal for this time of year. By now, the uh, large volume uh, home builders, uh, the uh, very large customers, have received the wood that they ordered earlier in the year, you know, between February and April. These uh, customers they make their orders for the projects that they know they're going to be working on at this time of year. And not just have they made their orders, but they've also received their wood. So the largest uh, volume buyers have the wood on the ground for their expectations for this coming, the building season that we're in right now during the summer. And therefore, prices will normally be getting softer at this time of year. Now we all know that the past two years have not been normal in terms of the seasonality where uh, we had quite a lot of activity later in the summer when things are usually slowing down, you know, August and then into September and pretty big bounces in November, even through January, which uh, previously historically was not a time when people would be looking for homes buying homes, closing on a home sale, and certainly not that much uh, new housing starts and construction activity. So the prices uh, of lumber have softened. Again, we're not anywhere near those lows that we had uh, in the prior 10 years, you know, when uh, housing was quite uh, down and therefore lumber sales were down and prices were low, you know, from 2006 to about 2018. Nowhere near that um, US $250 per thousand board feet on the Western Spruce 2x4s where it was for so long. Uh, it's still right now close to 600 but again, nowhere near those incredible, unprecedented, unbelievable highs that we had in spring of 2020. And again, a little bit last year. Uh, and then again, like I said, that bounce that we had in November last year. So the way that it looks to me when I look at the graphs and see where the trends are, um, because there's been a, a combination of unprecedented circumstances that have happened in the past two and a half years, partially uh, macroeconomic with the economy, partially demographics with the um, largest cohort of the first time home buyer now being the millennials uh, coming into the housing market. And of course, partially with the changes to society, with the COVID and the, um, you know, migration of people uh, away from the cities, people who now are working from home, they don't necessarily need to live close to where their work is. People are choosing where they actually want to live. And actually the most interesting thing about that has been that people, the uh, largest movement or the most noticeable movement has been people moving to jurisdictions, to states with low tax. Um, so, of course, the uh, attractive places like in the South, Texas and all these uh, Arizona places with nice weather, but um, a sizable amount of people have been moving to uh, a state like Montana, which has a lower taxation. And so right now, um, the lumber prices 
it's very interesting for this week, and this is something that I'm not even going to put on my website until next week because I do wait a week and a half. Uh, but my customers, the subscribers that have the login to my dashboard, um, saw it on Friday. Uh, so the prices uh, from the sawmills, what we call cash or print, um, is lower than futures. Okay, so a lot of people look at futures because, you know, you can just, it's like a benchmark, you can just look at it like the WTI Brent or something like that, you know, you can look at uh, interest rates or uh, GDP and all these kind of things, um, but futures is futures and cash is cash. And uh, especially in the last couple of years, uh, futures has been quite volatile, as I just said about cash, and really... Not to make it too simplistic, but futures only matters when the contract closes. So the last contract closed was May 15th. It closes every three months. And the current contract is July 15th. And there is actually a little bit more volume activity on the September contract because futures are forward looking and the uh, industry they hedge against, you know, what they think is happening uh, right now, like with cash, for example. This week, cash is lower. Uh, futures is at a premium to cash. And we haven't really had that um, during all of this upheaval of the changes in the past couple of years. So I find that very interesting and I'm not really sure what's going to happen. Uh, it's important to note that futures for lumber is very narrowly traded. It's a, um, it's a low volume um, it's really like a, a, a sort of, I don't want to say insider, but it's a, it's, um, if you look at, for example, copper or again, the WTI brand, it's tens of thousands of trades per day. Um, there's not a lot of liquidity in futures. Um, and cash to make the definition is, or print, is the uh, mill price, the sawmill or the wholesaler price. That's the, the level of the sales price determined between um, the like for the actual sale of wood between the producer or the wholesaler and the customer uh, and so that's what we do when uh, Madison's and um, sort of gets the data we do a market survey on Thursdays we call around to all the different industry in the different regions for the different species and the different products there's 500 individual data points that we check every week. We call the uh, producer, the sawmills, and we ask them what is their selling price. And we also call the uh, resellers, the wholesalers for those same products and ask them what their buying price is. And we figure out using uh, market um, uh, situation like uh, order files, uh, how much volume, uh, transportation issues, what's happening with the weather, is there any labor situation, uh, all these things to sort of figure out which um, where the weight that we put uh, on uh, where the price is. Um, and, you know, we've been doing this, uh, I'm the third owner, so we've been doing this every Friday, 50 times a year since 1952. We're actually having our 70th anniversary, Madison's Diamond anniversary, September 15th. Uh, 1952 was the first issue Peter Madison started. So uh, let's look at the graphs right now, and I will explain this dynamic that I've been talking about and show you the trend over the past couple of years compared to now, and then I'll come back with a few uh, more comments. So this is the benchmark Dimension Lumber Commodity sold, uh, produced and sold in the highest volume across North America. Western Spruce Pine Fir, Kiln Dry, 2x4, number 2 and better. The purple line is this year. Now, when I say that the uh, usual seasonality that we've come to know across the decades in construction and lumber sales doesn't seem to be happening for the past couple of years, but if you see the purple line, quite a similarity to the trend of the blue line of last year in the middle of the year, and the blue line at the end of last year, quite similar to the yellow line of the year before in 2020. And so for this year, the purple line, prices rose to the end of March, flattened out, dropped to May, flattened out, dropped to June quite a bit, flattened out. And then now, and this past week, uh, June 17th, dropped a little bit more. It's interesting because right now futures are going up 
And so normally I don't make predictions, but I, I think that these prices are going to start rising again, or at least stay flat uh, going forward in the next few weeks. And so here we have the six uh, most commonly used uh, dimension lumber and the one panel Canadian softwood plywood 9.5 millimeters out of uh, Ontario. And the graph that I was just showing you, the Western Spruce, that's the blue line. And you can see that big rise that surprised everyone sort of in the second quarter of 2020. That big correction down, another huge rise in about third quarter of last year. And this year, uh, at this time, trickling down. But as I'm saying, those swings, the very, very highs and the very, very lows are getting worked out. And it seems potentially that uh, the industry is finding where is this new price level that everybody keeps asking about? Probably going to be somewhere between 600 and 800 US dollars per thousand board feet. And once again, those same prices as a table you can see uh, this week, last week, uh, last month. And that Western Spruce at the very top there dropped from 660 the previous week to 535 US dollars per thousand board feet. Quite a big drop, perhaps a little bit of too much of a correction by industry, as I said, because futures is up quite a bit uh, at the end of last week and this week. We'll have to see what happens. My subscribers uh, to my dashboard will be able to look on Friday and see where um, the prices do end up being and uh, the website and my YouTube I will do in the following weeks. So there'll be quite a lag for everybody here uh, to find out as things happen. Okay, and so, um, very interesting. Uh, normally, like 10 years ago, for the past 10 years, for the past 20 years, I would say prices are sort of low, maybe might soften a little bit still uh, during this summer uh, into September. Generally, what we can say um, historically is by Labor Day is coming into like the low price for the year uh, and, and just uh, sales volumes and demand really drops after Labor Day, but we don't know. Um, the One of the things that's making it really difficult, apart from how the seasonality of the uh, consumer or the home builder and the real estate people doesn't seem to be in play anymore, is weather uh, and emergency situation. So when like last year uh british columbia or you know the whole west had unbelievable drought and this heat dome uh really extreme hot that literally never unprecedented uh which um you know we always have the danger of the fire season but that was really bad last year uh which uh causes a threat to supply uh even a perception of threat to supply but it really was uh a drop in supply in the summer last year because there's a fire ban uh, in the West. Uh, during the um, hot season, no heavy equipment is allowed into the forest. One spark and it can go up. Quebec, same thing. The, in the north, in the east, when they have their hot weather, they shut down, especially for August. There's a two-week actual holiday in Quebec, like sort of downtime in Quebec. It's too hot. You can't be on a construction site, you can't be working with equipment in the forest or at a, in a factory like a mill or whatever. Um, so last year uh, on the supply side we had the situation with the fire ban and the um, actual wildfire and then on the other hand with the um, demand when there's storms, when there's destruction, when there's flooding, and there needs to be emergency repairs and rebuilding. So that's why I say we can't predict, because we don't know what's going to happen with the weather, what's going to happen with all of these different things that we have, uh, uh, responses. Um, so that's normal, uh, seasonal, and then now uh, potential disruption to that um, in either direction. So if if there is no emergencies, if there's no uh, huge amounts of wildfire, we've had a quite a mild uh, spring and uh, early summer so far here in the West. It's not so much fun for us who like to be out in the sun, but the 
plants in the forest love it. The trees are green and growing. It's been cool. It's been quite cloudy most of the time. And so not to be, you know, going against the grain, but if that continues uh, until, you know, until we have the longest day uh, and uh, we're getting towards the back half of summer, um, then the fire, if there is fire, it won't be so bad. And then uh, right now there's some flooding going on in, in a lot of areas. There was a pretty serious snowpack uh, and then some big rains that came, you know, April and May. And so a lot of water, um, mostly in the north so far. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, in the highly populated areas. And so barring any of that, uh, we might have a little bit of more predictable. Um, and if it is more predictable, then the price won't have those wild swings that we saw uh, in spring of 2020 and in November of uh, last year. Um, so I'm going to stop there for now. I have some more videos coming up. U.S. housing was very interesting. And um, I'm going to do a video on something that I haven't done so far yet. Uh, sawmill production and curtailment because I think some people who've been watching uh, over the past couple of years, I was announcing that um, there are uh, sawmills coming online. There were companies reopening, buying mills for the past year and a half. Uh, it does take about 18 months for a sawmill to come online and we're getting to there now. We've had as well, we've had curtailments and downtime. Uh, for example, here in BC, still having a problem with the transportation uh, railways again not being particularly cooperative and the mills are not getting their rail cars and trucking is a problem all over trucking has been a huge problem especially in the east in quebec and new york state there's a lot less lumber moving on the railway uh, more on the highways and just can't get trucks and that has um, made it necessary for mills to take some downtime because they don't have room to put more wood in their yard because the wood that's waiting to go out, which is already sold, so it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the price, they're waiting for their um, vehicles or their rail cars to get that wood out. Uh, so if you like what you see here, uh, subscribe here on my YouTube, click like so that it gets recommended to other people to view as well. And if you need the data or want to see uh, the full scope of what we do every week that goes to my customers on Friday, here in my caption is a link to my website to the subscribe to fill out a form. Do that and you'll get a sample. And then if you wanted to, you could um, sign up to get the login and look at my fabulous dashboard with all the lumber prices and all the market commentary, uh, much more than what I put the little snapshot here on YouTube or on my website.